Welcome back, Vintage Gamers. Uh, we just finished round one with this Agro uh, Golos Hybrid Workshop deck. We're playing a Vintage Preliminary event tonight. Um, there is an RCQ coming up this Sunday, and I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to play in it yet. I, I'm not convinced that PO will be what I choose to register for the event, so um, we're going to try some things that are interesting to me. Something that has been interesting to me is I do think that Workshop is underrepresented in the format right now, and when Workshop is underrepresented... Uh, Tinker decks cut Hercules Recall, and you actually have a much easier time playing against the field. Um, especially with actually Tinker decks are kind of on the um, on the backswing right now as well. So uh, there's a lot of room right now for an aggro workshop deck to be very powerful. Um, and you've actually seen a, a smattering of aggro and prison workshop decks doing fairly well in challenges recently, but only as a very uh, a very small metagame contingent, like two workshop players per tournament, that kind of thing, uh, which is very abnormal for, for Vintage, but is um, actually working out quite well for those pilots who choose to play aggro or even prison. I think Mog just top eight with a prison workshop list uh, this week. My biggest problem with prison workshops is I don't believe it clocks fast enough to be a viable Vintage deck. Um, the best part about prison workshops is by playing Golos as your top end, you get to play main deck Tabernacle and have it actually be really, really strong. Uh, and I am looking for a deck right now that is allowed to play main deck Tabernacle. Uh, and so what I did was I cut the top end out of my most recent aggro shops list, which you should be able to find a video on my YouTube channel, um, might have been a 5.0 even. Uh, with aggro workshops and what I did is I like cut out the there was like um Phyrexian metamorphs and a sky ship or something and I cut out the top end of the aggro shops deck and I put in the most minimalist uh golos package I could find so what I did was I put in four golos one crucible one inventor's fair one caracas and one tabernacle so an eight card package here um, and so what you're missing from a traditional prison shops list right now is there might be some extra ghost quarters, there might be a bajuka bog, there's probably going to be more crucible of worlds, there might be a god pharaoh statue or some other controlling elements, there might be vault key. Um, but what I think I'm interested in is almost only golos for tabernacle. Now, it's a little hard to pass up Caracas. Caracas is also quite good in the current metagame. There's a lot of legendaries running around. Atraxas, Shieldreds, uh, Lavinias. So the Caracas makes sense to me. Uh, and then I think at that point, it's nice to have the ability to do the Inventor's Fair Crucible lock. Uh, and so I decided to put one Inventor's Fair, one Crucible. So we don't have a lot of the weaker cards I, in my mind. The Bajuka Bog and the Ghost Quarters, I think, are like the weaker cards. Uh, and we actually don't have to play a ton of extra lands. So yeah. So we have an aggro workshop package. So I'm doing uh, automaton, nettle cyst, inspector uh, as my aggro workshops package. I think this is like kind of what I would consider a core aggro workshops package at this point. I have cut like Mystic Forge. Um, Mystic Forge is totally a, a super powerful card, and it's totally fine in this deck. Mystic Forge and Karn actually are both restricted cards that I've cut from this list. I don't find Karn to be super castable. It's a very high variance card. Um, and I, and I wanted to make sure that this deck did the thing that it was trying to do. Uh, so I've cut Karn and I've cut Mystic Forge. Uh, I am playing one Needle. I think Needle is the highest value um, Saga target. Uh, and I, I think you can gain... I, I like the idea of having a Needle and a, a Tabernacle in the main. There is so much Bizarre right now. Just way too much Bizarre right now. Uh, so this is why I'm kind of doing this thing. Uh, and then I, in my sideboard, I really strongly, I strongly, strongly, strongly dislike the way workshop players build sideboards. Um, I kind of dislike the way a lot of vintage players are building sideboards right now. I want the most powerful card that is the single best card at shutting down these broken decks that are all over the format. So uh, in the case of Bazaar of Baghdad, the single best card is Leyland the Void. Um, obviously that's not the case against the aggro vine deck, but against Squee and against Dredge, the best thing you can do is put in a turn zero ley line that doesn't go on the stack. So we're playing four ley line of the void. And then if the best thing you can do against these tinker decks, especially, especially, especially coveted jewel is just slam a null rod. 
Uh, no rod just stops all of their shenanigans. It really forces them uh, to have a force on the uh, a force of will right away, which is actually really hard for the deck to do. And that, then their backup plan is only Saga and Tomb combined, which is not easy to do either. So like it's not lights out, but it's very very strong. So I if I am playing a deck that can support ley lines or can support null rods, I'm playing four of each of them in all of my sideboards because it's just the um most powerful way to interact with those decks now i'm not convinced the rest of my sideboard is particularly what i want to be doing um i wanted to have the ability to archive trap doomsday opponents even if it's only like one archive trap because uh making them you know have it in the back of their heads they can get archive trapped and it will really help i'm hoping that this list is actually decent against doomsday the the dichotomy is typically aggro shops is quite good against doomsday and prison shops is quite bad against doomsday um and so i'm hoping that this this hybrid version i don't think taking out metamorphs is really hurting your doomsday matchup obviously some of these uh funky lands are not great uh but you can bring in null rod and, and i think it makes a lot of sense um, but I am going to play one Shadow Sphere and one Crucible for um, creature matchups and Wasteland matchups. One Cage in case I get Oathed. And I, I do think it's good to respect the Mono White deck and have access to some dismembers. Uh, turn 1 Archon, as you saw, is just complete nonsense. Super, super strong. I would say that this Workshop deck is bad against other Workshop decks. Uh, but thankfully, there are not very many other um, Workshop decks of this variety running around right now. Uh, so you shouldn't have to worry about, like, losing the mirror to worm coil engines which is something i just don't care about if i get worm coil engine and lose a mirror then so be it i'm going to try to beat the decks that i think are going to be present in the format so yeah um i'm hoping we'll have a really solid prelim tonight and that this idea tests well and we'll see what happens if you'd like to see your deck played on this channel check out the patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list let's battle Okay, here we go. Round one, vintage prelim, Monday night. Uh, hopefully my opponent is not actually on Oath, like the thing says their last deck was, because I am not remotely prepared for Oath with this deck, but sand definitely is good. We'll keep it. Yeah, I'm probably just not beating Oath, I would assume. Okay, it is not Oath. There's a Chancellor of the Annex. I assume it's not Oath. <laughs> probably Mono White. Uh, Chancellor of the Annex, probably really annoying for us, especially because our hand is not uh, particularly fast. Mm hmm. Oh, they have a three mana, no. It's a weird hand to keep. Their five card hand, or I guess it was their six card hand. That's a good draw. That's just an incredible draw. That has to be one of my absolute best draws. I'm like interested in maybe wastelanding them. If they have no three drop right now, it means they kept a seasoned dungeoneer, right? It also protects my Saga next turn. I'm just going to Wasteland on their Wasteland. If they have like a second Wasteland, I guess it gets a little awkward, but... Okay. Okay. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, I can't workshop and pay the one tax on a mana crypt. I could, uh, like, run my needle into the thing off of my workshop and then play patchwork mana crypt sphere. Is that better than going ancient tomb, pay one for mana crypt? Yeah, I could, I could do something like workshop, get my needle countered, automaton... Crypt Sphere. Like, they're not really in a great position to, to Wasteland me, and I want to get a Sphere in play so that they can't play a Seasoned Dungeoneer, and I also want a Creature in play so I could maybe steal the initiative. I also am not going to Needle anything this game. 
I'm gonna go with that line. Get my needle countered here. I don't have to do this. Like there are definitely other like viable options, but I think I like this the most. This is gonna keep them from playing a four drop and I'm gonna also accelerate my mana to the maximum. They mold to six and their hand was Wasteland, Wasteland, Sapphire, Chancellor, Chrome Mox, and probably a seasoned dungeoneer, I guess. I don't know exactly. It's an odd hand, to say the least. But I mean, I, I'm just like years ahead of them right now. Like, they're kind of incentivized to hit my workshop, but that just puts them farther from doing anything. They had triple Wasteland. And they can't play Seasoned Dungeoneer right now. They could play a three drop if they drew one. Okay, they're going to Wasteland me. Uh, still is fine for us. I think I'm just going to continue pressing the advantage with a Nettle Cyst. I think that's better than, like... I guess I could just go Saga Automaton and, like, really force their hand here. That also seems fine. Like, if they wasteland me in response to the trigger, it's not even bad for me. And, like, they kind of have to wasteland me. These things are going to be 5-5s, five right? Like, they're not... They're not at liberty to play a land and play a 3-drop a here. They have to wasteland me. Yo, welcome back, Van. Hope you're doing well. All right, so here's a cavern, but they still can't play a four drop, which is what we think is there in their hand. I, I, they can't let the saga let me make five fives every turn, right? Like that, that would be, that would be suicidal. I guess they could play a anointed peacekeeper, but we actually have that beat as well. All right, my opponent. All right, you you got to waste on me, right? No. All right. Not even gonna end up playing this dental cyst. I mean, they they the, the only thing that makes sense is they have a seasoned dungeoneer, right? Sure. Like, I just don't care. It's not good enough. My little patchy boy is bigger than that. Weird game. Weird game. Okay, so we're going to bring in uh, Dismember and Shadow Sphere and maybe Crucible. No, no, but they have to wasteland me too. Like they, they, they can't let a saga to go off. Take out Chalice on the play, and we'll take out Trinisphere on the play, and we'll take out. Born. Do you, how many? Am I just supposed to take out like all? I can't take out all the spears, right? What am I really supposed to be keeping in in this scenario? Doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, maybe we can go Null Rods and Tabernacle. Like, that technically could work. I don't know if that's actually a thing that we actually want to be doing. I mean, Spheres were good in that game, but I can't imagine Spheres are normally good. I don't think Null Rods are particularly good either, unless you're on the play, in which case I would bring in all four. But I just don't think any of the stacks pieces on the draw is, like, what we want to be doing, right? And Needle is just Wasteland. I don't. I also don't know if No Rod is really what we want to be doing, but... What's better between Null Rod and, and these stacks pieces? Yeah, I, I just don't have any extra cards to bring in on the draw, <laughs> you know? Like... My deck only has so many cards that are going to be playable. Like, my, my whole sideboard is, you know, not for mono-white. 
the, the question is like what what combination of these cards should we bring in? Like these all seem fine, right? These are all fine. I mean, if they finish a dungeon, we have lost the game. I don't think we're gonna keep a Cajun for that. It's really like between these cards, like how which four do we want? I think we just want Null Rod. Like I'll probably bring some amount of spheres. I might bring in some spheres on the play, but let's just do this. This hand is pretty bad, I would think. This is not exactly doing something that I would consider to be powerful. We do have strip mine, but it's not like this hand is very good. It doesn't produce fast mana. I don't really like this hand. I'm just gonna mulligan this. Um, this is better. I'm just gonna put the null rod on the bottom. Well, maybe I'll put the tabernacle on the bottom. I don't really see it. Well, I could keep the tabernacle and the null rod and just put shadow spear on the bottom because I can't equip a shadow spear anyways. North Carolina? That's that's not exactly reachable. Sounds awesome though. Chrome mock. I just have six. What am I doing here? Why am I wasting time? I guess I could represent Mindbreak Trap. All right, here we go. That's a much better hand. Oh, that is a broken hand. Uh, hmm. Now I have to really consider things. I think I'm just going to play this Tabernacle. It's not great here, but it does either take away their tomb or take away their white source. Kind of weird, but I don't really think I'm going anywhere very fast. Revoke the Mox. That would be impressive through an Archon of Amiria. Where my non-basic lands enter the battlefield tapped. Archon of Amiria reads in no few words, uh, your opponent can't play magic. Very fair card. <laughs> All right, so we got an Ancient Tomb tap for this Amaria. I don't know what that means. Maybe it means they have a second Ancient Tomb, or maybe it means they have a Thalia. Oh, they're just going to go for Wasteland. Interesting. Wasteland's really bad for me here, because I am not progressing in this game in the slightest. Um... Boy. Uh, no, I just had, I ran out of cards that were good, or bad, I, I, I ran out of cards that were good in the matchup, but I needed to keep some cards that were bad in the matchup. Theoretically, there's a world where we could Tabernacle Null Rod them, but it's not exactly a uh, winning plan against an Ancient Tomb deck. But I, I am a tutor deck that has access to Tabernacle, so. I think if my workshop gets wastelanded, I can't play this game, so I can't really afford to play my workshop. However, I can't really afford to play anything, so I don't really know my plan here. Maybe they'll wasteland my tabernacle. Seems like they wouldn't. They could just pay with the wasteland. I, I don't know how I'm winning this game, to be perfectly honest. Like, turn one Archon is just so good. Yeah. Well, do as I say, not as I do. Well, Archon is a lot better than the new creature. One, it flies. Uh, two, it has the non-basic land clause. And the non-basic land clause, as you can already tell from me not being able to play Magic, is incredibly important. The non-basic land clause is like half of how why this is good. All right, so what I can do is I can Wasteland their Wasteland and then play my Workshop. And then hopefully, I don't know, 
<laughs> I don't know what the plan is. Well, the plan is die, I guess. I don't really know. <laughs> I can't win, man. <laughs> Turn one Archon is, is too strong. It's okay. We got game one. So game three, we get to be on the play. That's all that matters, right? No, I'm, of course not a replacement. I just don't think... I don't really think the other one's effect is that powerful. Compared to Archon. I don't, I don't think it's like... Uh, I don't think it's good enough. I don't really know what I was supposed to do in this game besides concede. I just don't have the means. I jump and I take nine in the air. Okay, cool. Uh, Pan Archon is not really present in the metagame, no. All right, so on the play, we get to do what they did to us by playing Chalice of the Void. Uh, and maybe we play some Spheres. We might just play the Null Rods and call it a day. I think I like Crucible. I don't really want Tabernacle. I'd rather have Chalice. I think I might just keep Null Rods and Chalice and not play Spheres. I don't really see the a card I'd really want to replace for Sphere. So. Like, if I play a turn one Null Rod, that's already going to be pretty good. Uh, Chalice and... Yeah, this looks fine. Keep. This shall also stop my opponent from doing anything uh, extremely problematic for us. And then we can try to keep them off mana using our wastelands. Should be a nice spot. Unless, yeah, even if they have a basic planes, we have a strip mine, so. Oh, they're going to strip mine us. Okay. Uh, hopefully we draw m not that, I guess. Kind of need to draw like an ancient tomb or a saga or a, a workshop were my best draws. But this is fine. I'm currently ahead. Uh-huh. Ancient tomb. Sure. What? Opponent? Opponent? What are you what are you doing? What what what, are, what you doing over there? <laughs> that is not how I would draw this matchup up. A bold play. A bold play. Okay, sure, yeah. Mhm. Mm Well, maybe they have a ton of man lands and we're going to lose this game. Could happen, right? I'm out of mana, so... <laughs> Workshop? Alright. I sure hope that this <laughs> grizzly bear is good enough. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all right. Pump the grizzly bear. Yeah, something like that. You can't have more mana, I'm about to say. Workshop? Wasteland. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> what a brilliant game of magic! Look at all the fun we're having! Wasteland, only the greatest and most fun games. Very interactive game. <laughs> Lots of back and forth. <laughs> Look at the graveyard, so many spells. GG's. My two mana spell was just a bit more powerful, you know? <laughs> Brilliant. I'll take it. 
Okay, here we go. Round two. We're up against our nemesis, Lord Beerus, the Dredge Master. Um, been streaming a lot of vintage in the past, yeah, you know, actually past year or so. So if you want to check out uh, their stream, they're on, they're on quite a lot. Uh, and they stream a bunch of different competitive formats at a pretty high level. So uh, make sure you check them out. And we're up against Dredge, and we've got our Goloses. So can't say I... Wow, this is going to be great. <laughs> This is going to be great. Uh, all right. So I'm, I'm definitely keeping this hand. I just need to figure out how we sequence this. The answer has got to be Mana Vault, Thorn, Needle, right? I guess I could also go Workshop, Mana Vault, Golos for a Wasteland, and a Needle. But, I mean, if my opponent has to have double force, and then they're going to get Needled, and their hand's not even an eight-card hand, I think it's fine. Like, we run into, a technically run into, like, a Mind Break Trap if they have one in the main. But, I think it just makes sense. Because I can't just go Thorn, Needle, obviously, uh, because it will cost two. But I think I'm more than happy to use my Mana Vault to do so. So let's go Workshop, Mana Vault. If I get missteps, I wonder what our plan is. At that point, it might just be Naked Needle. If I get forced or negated here, is it Naked Needle? I don't know. Beers did let us know that they are double queuing another prelim, so. We did get our Mana Vault forced. Interesting. So now I must choose between play a Thorn now and guarantee a Needle Resolve and a Survive, or throw a Naked Needle out right now and force them to have Force or Vigor, Will, or Mana Vault. They're playing an Atraxa, which is quite interesting. Um, Dredge can play any and all of those in the main. I think because I don't have a Bajuka Bog in my deck, would they really Force of Negation on Mana Vault if they had a Force of Will in their hand? I feel like the answer is no. Why would you Force of Negation on Mana Vault? To prevent me from playing Thorn into something that can be? Well, they're probably playing like Dread Return Atraxa, which is interesting. I'm just worried that if we play a Thorn and then we Needle, it's just not going to be good enough. Is that ever going to be the case? I mean, there's definitely times where that there were times where that times where that would be the case if they put just like three Dredgers in their yard, or they put even just like one Stinkweed Imp in their yard. All right, I think I'm not, no, 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 no. I have just a needle, no bog, no soul guide. That's what I'm saying. I can't clear the graveyard, which is why I'm, I think I'm incentivized to play a needle here, which is really frustrating. I'm just pretty worried because would you really negation if, Would you really negation if you had no other force in their hand? It's just it's just too risky to not play needle here. I kind of agree. I, I, I don't. I, I honestly don't think I'm winning if they tap Bizarre Baghdad, which is why I played the Needle. It's a little... It's frustrating because I have the way to protect my Needle forever, but... 
All right, if this resolves, the needle is in forever, and all they can do is uh, pitch to end of turn. All right, this game should be pretty locked then. All right. So interesting play from the opponent. Um, obviously, they, they like are kind of incentivized to do that. If I resolve a mana vault, I get to play Thorn and then Needle anyways, and they just counter the Thorn, but uh, taking game one from Dredge, you, you'd love to see it. Uh, also, I have like a ridiculous sideboard to beat Dredge because I just want to beat Bizarre Baghdad. What can I say? Cages and Ley Lines. Uh, Chalice is no good. Revoker is no good. And what is the next worst card? I guess Shadow Sphere is actually kind of okay in this matchup sometimes, too. Uh, I might keep Shadow Sphere as well. Hmm. Now I need to look for one or two cards to cut. Uh, is Crucible actually good in this matchup? I'm not convinced it is. So I could technically go Crucible out. Crucible not in. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I could play more Tabernacles. That is always that is always an option. I've never played the full four. I have played three. I played three in mono white a couple times. Anyone have an opinion on Crucible of Worlds in this matchup? It doesn't really. I don't really think it should matter. I know Revoker does nothing and Chalice does nothing, so those are easy. But then the second one is Crucible. A Soul Guide would do a lot. I don't like Soul Guide Lantern. I think that card is not strong. Like I said, I I, I want only the, the strongest cards, and so I played four Ley Lines. Because I, I don't want to have... I just want it to be the most effective card. All right, there's a Ley Line, a Tabernacle, some creatures, a Golos. Keep. I, it's a, I mean, sure, it's a great force of vigor. Everything in my deck has a great force of vigor target. I don't know why that's a... I mean, you just have to live with that. The card exists. <laughs> it's true. I did not... I did not specify the opinion had to be good. Fair. I don't know. In my mind, if you want to beat Squee and you want to beat Dredge, the single best thing you can always be doing is Leylining. So. Let's see what they got for us. No activation. Leyline. Uh... I am just going to play Patchwork Automaton. I, it's the best card against Vigor in this situation. I would love to play an Inspector here, but I feel like that's exposing myself too much. This hand's okay. It's a little slow. Like, if I could play a turn one Golos to make sure I can get a, a Wasteland, I would be happier. Um, but... So this way, if they Vigor me, they don't, they, all they hit is the Ley Line... Which I kind of expect to get vigored here, which I am. Uh, you can't pay for this ward. Oh, they messed up. Oh, no, Beerus. No, 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 no. Oh, no. So, ward reads, whenever this creature comes to target or spell ability, uh, I counter that spell or ability and thus the opponent plays too. It's not going to take, you know, half of this force of vigor. It's going to counter the whole one. That's a good learning experience. Uh, but yes, obviously, uh, a huge mistake. It's a good one, though. It's a good one to know. One misstep, one dredge. Golos... I mean, Ward is not the most common vintage ability, so. I don't mind, I don't mind, well, 
obviously it's better when I'm not the one making the huge mistake. <laughs> but I don't I don't mind things like that happening um cuz it's really good to catch them on camera and get everyone have everybody learn through a game that's not their own game. A lot of times you learn through mistakes you make in your games, which is which always stings because you're going to lose from it, but learning from mistakes people make in other games even better. Okay, here we go. Uh, now on to round three of this preliminary event. We're up against another powerful wizard. Uh, Ryan has been playing a mixture of Esper Tinker and various bizarre decks. So could be either of those two today. We'll have to see. Um, this hand doesn't really function, so it's mulligan. This hand is a bit better, but has some issues with uh, fast mana. Wish we could have some moxins or or some stuff like that. But all right, time to find out what we're playing against here. All right, misty rainforest. So I would suspect Esper Tinker, but obviously plenty of range. Could be any blue deck, really. Okay. All right, I'm just going to put a three ball in play. Or sorry, put a little ball in play. Nope, I am going to put nothing in play. Fair enough. All right, uh, if they have Mystical or Vampiric for Tinker here, we just die. What's in this art? I haven't actually looked... Is it, are these goblins getting like, what is happening? Oh, yeah. So we've lost this game. Opponent is going to tinker kill us. Kind of look like a sliver, doesn't it? Oh, they had a mentor. That's the best possible hit. If they had hit a Saga, we could have, you know, put a Sphere Resistance, made it hard for them to do things, but... Uh, is there any compelling sequence here that can get us out of this situation? Probably not, but any compelling sequence starts with a Sphere. The question is, do I want to play Crucible Saga, or do I want to just play... Sorry, Crucible and Sphere, or do I want to just play Saga and Sphere? I think I want to play Workshop so that I can play a Golos. I guess they both would let me do that, but then I wouldn't be able to use my Saga activation. I mean, we're pretty much dead here. Like, if they hadn't hit Mentor, we might have had a chance if they bricked and then we put a Sphere in play, but... I think Sphere is better than Golos and hope they brick, because Sphere should stop them from doing, like, something. And then we can, like, Tabernacle them to slow down the Mentor. Ugh. I mean, they do need to, like be very unlucky off the top of their library. Like, hit Saga Saga, you know? Something like that. Though I also have an Ancient Tomb problem right now, so... All right, this resolved. We'll lock up some of their mana, I think, with Tabernacle. 
I think that's better than any of these other options. We do have a problem with making constructs and paying for things. Guess we could always play another Golos. Hmm. How big is our construct? 5-5? Five, five? So we currently have a bigger construct, but we have to use this ancient tomb. We do get to replay our sagas off a of crucible when they go away and we can get like a black lotus or a soul ring or something that might help. I don't think it will be enough. Our shadow spear is not in the main, unfortunately. We also don't have like a manifold key, which our opponent can get a manifold key off of their saga, which will be pretty bad for us as well. We do have a needle for their manifold key, but it's probably just too late. Okay, that's gotta be game. See if they have, I mean, it doesn't even matter if they have Hercules or not. They, whatever they get off of this should just be winning. I can't imagine this doesn't kill us. This was uh, definitely a game where we lost the die roll. Because if, if we win the die roll in this game, our first sphere gets countered, our second sphere resolves, and then this whole line from them just doesn't really work. Uh, but yeah, it's, I mean, this is probably one of the toughest matchups, I guess, for shops. All these tinker matches are quite hard. So if I'm them, I get, I don't know, time walk. That might not do it. Uh, if they have a Hercules, they could just Hercules. Uh, if they have a Swords or Caracas, maybe. If they have... Um, time walk just seems the most compelling to me. How can you really lose from this point if you cast Time Walk? Yeah, okay. Like, I'm forced to take five here and save life. Oh, they have Yogwell off the top after Time Walk and Demonic, huh? Interesting. So that gives you Lotus Time Walk again. You could even go Mana Crypt Lotus Time Walk. Um, you could tinker this mana crypt into a oh oh no no it's even better uh four mana tinker the mana crypt into a time vault and then get the manifold key off of the saga and even if you weren't already winning you take infinite turns <laughs> nice I'm interested to see if they choose that line. I'll concede after they cast their next spell here. I just want to see if they see that line. No, they just went for time walk. That's fine. Um, I like the tinker line, though. All right, so this is easy. I'm going to bring in four null rods. What am I going to take out? Crucible. Tabernacle. Uh, 
Oh, they're definitely still winning if they cast one with nothing, so... No problems there. Mm, what are the next two worst cards in my deck? Maybe, like, Nettlesist, Nettlesist? Maybe not. I don't know. Some some kind of trimming was, was supposed to happen. Uh, yeah. So Tinker is a problem, but that has always been the case. This hand has turn one nettle cyst into I don't know wasteland golos. That's just not good enough against Tinker. I I, I would never recommend keeping this. This hand has no mana. I should say not enough mana. So that's a mulligan as well. You were really looking for a turn one null rod or a turn one sphere, something like that. The opponent's deck is too high power level to be derping around. Ah, okay, this is a nice hand. This is a patchwork into null rod. We can put away the Needle and the Golos, because the Golos won't be very castable. Done. Oh, the Wing Tissar has disconnected. That's unfortunate. This is a fine hand. It's not the greatest hand. It's definitely not a great Saga hand com combined with Null Rod. If we draw Ancient Tomb off the top, it's a good Saga hand again. Um, I would be happy enough with things like Wasteland, Sphere, Three Ball, uh, even Nettle Sis, maybe. All right, the Winged Azar has joined the game. Do we have a Patchwork Automaton? Guess we'll find out together. I assume so. Not a huge deal. They're probably just still reconnecting. No worries. They were lagging, so they seed. All right. We have a patchwork. Our patchwork is bigger. Do we have a null rod? This is a big question. If this resolves, it might buy us some time. If it does not resolve, we are in a world of pain. It does not resolve. All right. They have four cards in hand, and we got rid of their force and their mystical tutor. We have a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, probably just want to draw another Null Rod. They should have turn one Tinker with Force Backup. Mentor, Tinker, Mentor. Okay, Mentor, one card in hand. Boundary Inspector. Well, it all kind of depends on what that one card is. Or what they top deck. If they hit Tinker, Ancestral... Things are bad. If they don't, might be okay. All lands get us Saga tokens. All non-workshop lands, I should say, get us Saga tokens. And spells are good, obviously. No spell from them. Okay, no spell from them. We have another patchwork, so we're not getting Saga tokens, unfortunately. Uh, I am going to... Hmm, I'm going to cast this patchwork off of my Sapphire... In case they Hercules. And then I'm going to attack with the team. Just 
trying to force as much damage through as we can here. They could swords this and pay, and then... Yeah, okay, so they have swords. So they get the swords our big guy and pay, and then probably won't trade their mentor. That would be silly. Uh, and we still don't have saga tokens, unfortunately. Just not the right mana situation. All right. You got any spells? Yeah, we really need a null rod to resolve. Did not have any other follow-up plans. Kind of the burden of only a five-card hand. No convincing follow-up plays. Three car, three mana. Tinker. All right, well. Both teams fought hard. This is an abysmal matchup for sure. Didn't even get Hercules. <laughs> just got Tinker twice. Tinker can be hard to use in the matchup if you don't have force for the spheres and the null rods, but uh, the doctor across the table had force for the spheres and the null rods, so Tinker is free to do whatever it wants. Uh, my opponent did Tinker for a Sensei's top, which is nice. I mean, Shops is good against... I mean, the opponent, opponent's deck is not a very good deck either, so... I don't know. Decks have good and bad matchups, Slasher. I don't know what to tell you. The only deck that doesn't have good and bad matchups is Doomsday. That's just the only bad matchup is a pilot. All right, so I am going to get a needle off of this Saga so that they can't uh, do Sensei's top things. And then we're going to play a Foundry Inspector. I mean, we absolutely crossed round one and two, right? I don't want to make this attack. But Monastery Mentor and Tinker are the two best cards in the matchups, so not much to sue. So they vamped away the Sensei's top and got an Ancestral. Why would they get top? Maybe they boarded out Citadel and, and drew the Sphinx or something. That's Or also top plays really well with Monastery Mentor. It's going to help them, uh, you know, control the board. I think Shops is a great choice for Sunday. As I said earlier. But I think I boarded out Tabernacle too. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to... Ooh, no, no Ballista name. It's a little greedy. No Ballista name is very greedy here. I think a Ballista clears this up pretty well. They probably expect me not to have a Ballista if I'm playing Null Rod, to be fair. I, I don't know what my play is here. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> I died to Double Spell here. Oh, yeah. I died at just that. Yeah, it depends on your deck. It depends on your, depends on your Tinker deck. Um, if you're like a deck with a bunch of Hercules recalls, then I typically want to keep Citadel in so you can Hercules your opponent and then combo kill them. Uh, if you are not, then it doesn't really make a lot of sense to leave in Citadel. My opponent does not have exactly enough to kill me, so they have to leave a bunch of things back, and they're going to attack. Um, top is better than Citadel in that spot anyways. I don't know. I don't remember what the life total was. I mean, clearly Sphinx is the best thing in that spot, but they must have drawn Sphinx. 
All right, that is a card that is not going to save me. They were at 12? Yeah, maybe. It's totally possible. All right, unfortunate pairing. Un don't really expect to see Esper Saga in the 2-0 uh, too much recently, but we got got. Happens. We'll play round four. All right, welcome to the fourth and final round of this vintage prelim. We're up against Chess Knight. Chess Knight uh, is always doing some brewing, so we'll have to see what they decided to register tonight. I have a... Um, this is just short of doing... Powerful things, but this is probably reasonable no it's not just short of doing powerful things what am i talking about i have turn one a stone golem justin can't math i i uh i do consider this doing the powerful thing considering this is a time where i would agree with slasher and that this is probably the best card in my deck so well lodestone versus three ball on the play three ball has got to be better than a lodestone right slasher but in general, Lodestone is a bit stronger. I mean, in this exact instance, I would rather have a three ball. If a three ball resolves, I have won the game. If a Lodestone resolves, technically they can still play spells. Lodestone doesn't stop Moxon, you know? Oh, that seems like a skill issue. This Lodestone just let them cast turn one Ancestral. Are we, are we sure this card's good? Slasher! Slasher! It's a pretty good draw. Uh, I guess nothing really matters, right? So I can go Inspector, Golos, Wasteland. Sure, why not? I guess there's no reason not to strip mine first, right? Whatever. I don't care anymore. Go, 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 go. Uh, all right. What am I getting with this Golos? Probably a Saga. Maybe an Inventor's Fair. Can I play and utilize an Inventor's Fair? I don't have a Null Rod in my deck. I could, like, get a sphere. Or a needle or something. Or a revoker. I think I'm going to get an inventor's fair. I already have plenty of attackers. What I really need is to stop my opponent from murdering me. Wasteland or strip mine seems fine. No, I don't think that's I don't think that's unreasonable at all. I like fair and strip mine. I think that's it, probably. Yeah, I just like fair and strip mine, and then like next I would say Saka. I don't mind I don't mind a strip mine at all. I just don't know, like, if that's going to matter. I mean, if I had a Null Rod in my deck, that would be a really big reason to play, to get fair. But there's no Null Rod in the main. I don't think there's enough Tinker right now to ju justify playing the Null Rods in the main. Um, But we'll see. I don't know exactly what opponent is doing. Obviously, it looks like PO, but... Lodestone. I see. So it's their, like, blue-white prison deck. Hmm. I mean, now I kind of wish I had a Saga. Hmm. 
Hmm. All right, so even if I lose something here. Oh, I know you don't play any vintage last year, so you don't know what people are playing, so. I have to attack. Um, does it make sense to play? Oh, God, I don't even know. What does it make sense to play here? I guess we can technically get forced, right? I can play a three cost right now. I can get strip mine lock, but I can't use it this turn. I can just get a three ball. I just don't know if a three ball is good anymore. What if I get a revoker on Sapphire? I don't know, man. If I get Crucible, am I crazy? What if they Tangle Wire me? I can just drop enough stuff. It doesn't matter. So my options are really Revoker, Sphere, Three Ball, Metal Cyst, Crucible. It all depends on how long I think this game is going. I just don't see Nettle Cyst as necessary. But it does represent lethal on the next turn. I don't think they're PO. I think they're some kind of blue-white prison deck, and they have Mox Opal so they can play, you know, Tinker and that kind of thing. I think that they have, like, Tangle Wires and Spheres and Crucibles and that kind of thing. There's definitely upside in getting Nettle Cyst as it will prevent, pre present lethal immediately. It doesn't tax them at all, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure taxing them is the correct line anyways. It really depends on what's in their deck, and I don't know what's in their deck. If my Revoker gave me lethal, I would take Revoker here, but let's try... I'm going to go with Nettle Cyst because I think putting lethal on the table makes sense. It's the least grindy, but it does make them have to have an answer right away. Basic planes, five mana, no clock, no, what's it called? Lavinia, that makes sense, in a taxing deck. That does save them. And what? An Oswald Fiddlebender. That's scary. Oh, that's very scary. It's a good draw. Might not be enough, though, if they have, you know, if they have Time Vault. Justin tapping the wrong man. All they need to do is Lavinia chump the germ, and they can keep their fiddle bender and turn these into one drops. All right. What do you got for me? Obviously, two mana time vault, turn one of these into a key is good enough. 
Uh, three mana Tinker, turn one into a key is good enough. Oh, wait, nope. Tinker's four mana. Time Vault's three mana. Time Vault is still good enough. Tinker is not currently good enough. I mean, you could probably tinker for something better than a key, but or better than a vault. Um, hmm. Who did they play against? Darg, Soul King, and Gracia. All right, they did not have the answer. Well, I'm going to assume my opponent is playing some some stacks pieces, so you can like turn tangle wires into smoke stacks or something. I'm not I'm not really sure. I don't I don't know what opponent is exactly doing. Uh, I do know I'm going to bring in dismember, and I'm going to bring in null rod over. Um, I'm going to take out my uh, stacks pieces. And I'm going to bring in Crucible, and I'm going to bring in Sh Shadow Spear, maybe. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure on the draw, I don't want to play any of these uh, prison pieces that are not revokers. And I'll take out this Tabernacle, and we'll just bring in Null Rods and this kind of stuff. It's like something to be said about Cage, but they probably only have Tinker, and I don't really buy... I mean, you can you can get your thing off of Saga, but I guess you could stop creatures from coming into play with with Fiddlebender. Maybe we should bring in a cage. Seems somewhat reasonable to me. And then I'm gonna take out, I guess, one of the Null Rods. Don't really know how good the Null Rod is going to be. All right, so I have extreme amounts of mana and fast beaters. So normally, I don't recommend you keep these kind of hands against uh, most of the decks in the format. But against what my opponent is doing, I think this is a totally reasonable keep. I would I would say like keep this deck in, this hand in like a, a workshop mirror as well. Um, maybe even in like an aggro vine matchup. So it's just like that kind of matchup where your opponent is probably not doing the the stormy stuff. Uh, all right, we've got Tundra Pearl. I guess if they play a Lavinia on turn one, it's quite good. That's a good mulligan. That's the power of the London mulligan right there. Uh, they mulligan to four cards, but they're able to find Pearl plus Tundra. So that is going to turn off uh, all of our zero drops here. Uh, but we still have the ability to play this Automaton. Uh, so I will. And then I will probably throw one Pearl into the Lavinia just so that I could block and trade if they want to make that trade. I can't play this Nettle Assist on the next turn because uh, it is a non-creature spell. Wow, they have a Fiddlebender too. This could be really bad for me. It's a very solid London Mull. Um, so I will be able to play Nettlesis next turn and make a Saga token. So I'm going to throw this into that and then attack and then play a Saga. And then next turn, I can play Nettle Cyst Academy and make a token. Uh, we just have to see how bad this Oswald is for us. I don't know. We're going to find out together. So Oswald sacks an artifact and finds one that is exactly one uh, mana value higher and only at sorcery speed. 
Oh, we're just dead next turn. Awesome. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Uh, dismember or needle or no rod. Okay. Can't say that was bad. Maybe I should lead four no rods in my deck. <laughs> now that I think about it. Oh, that's just called putting the good cards in your deck, Slasher. Hashtag play shops. I put it in my deck to draw it. So in my last 20 matches playing workshops, I am 5-0-4-1-5-0-3-1. So that's not 20 matches. That's 19 matches. But the last 19 matches, I am 13-1. and one? That doesn't make sense. It's not 19 matches. It's 14 matches. No, 4-1 is in there. And three one, so seven, seventeen and one. Deck fees a wheel bit powerful. Uh, seventeen two. There you go, nineteen. Some kind of math is happening here. No, you see, that deck is bad, Slasher. It's because I lost with it. If a deck is so bad that it makes me lose, you know? Think about it. If if I go 17 and 2 with shops and I go 2 and 17 with initiative tinker, just how bad is it? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if I want to get Graft Digger's Cage in case that helps something bad from I could just needle the Oswald, I guess. Seems fine. I'm just going to go get a Sphere and kind of lock my opponent out of playing spells. Oh, I cut all the spheres from my deck. Uh... I see. I done goofed. I can't play Crucible because there's a Lavinia in play right now. Uh, yeah, I guess those stones just better anyways. <laughs> it's a sphere as a five, three. I don't think backup null rod is particularly compelling unless they have fragmentize, I guess. Like the thing I would be worried about them casting is Hercules. This was a real close game. They almost pulled it off. Golos is not castable from the situation. All right. Another great prelim with shops. This build is interesting to me. Um, I definitely think that Golos is extremely powerful, and there's so much bizarre running around that having main deck tabernacle is very compelling. Um... I don't know if this is the exact configuration. I assume that some of these sideboard cards need work, but I really am happy with at least these eight sideboard cards for Leyline for Null Rod. I think that Shop's decks not playing Leyline in their sideboard are just kidding themselves. 
Um, you should just be playing the cards that make you win the matchups. And Leyline is the card that makes you win the matchups when it comes to Bizarre. Uh, so I don't think you should be playing anything less than 4 no Rod, 4 Leyline. Uh, the rest of these seven cards, I'm not convinced, are the best choices in their card slot, but uh, plenty to choose from. I do like this idea of aggro shops with a Golos top end uh, with a slightly, you know, smaller Golos package. I don't think it's embarrassing to have Inventor's Fair or Caracas in your deck. And obviously the main deck Tabernacle gives you some serious value against Bizarre back then. Uh, and then I think that the Nettlesys Patchwork Automaton uh, as your core aggro plan is very, very strong. Foundry Inspector is a card that I'm interested in seeing if there's better options because I'm not 100% convinced that Foundry Inspector is the best option, but I'm not really sure what else you would play there. Uh, Foundry Inspector does do a nice thing in counteracting your spheres but and making your Golos semi-castable. Not sure. I do like the first Needle and the uh, Crucible to go with the Fair. Those were good. I didn't end up having very many matchups where we were like um, playing a long game with Crucible, but I, I just don't think you want to play a long game. Playing a long game in Vintage means you're doing something wrong, in my mind. Um, the format is very fast, and you want to win the game. You don't want to give your opponent time to do things. So, yeah, I don't know. Workshops continues to be very good for me. Obviously, it's not a deck that I would prefer to play if given the option, but um, it's certainly one that I have played in the past, and maybe we'll play again. We'll have to see. Uh, new vintage content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this YouTube channel. I will see you then.